Hi, my name is uh, Alden Ho Chan. Uh, yes, <laughs> I'm Chinese. My wife's name is uh, Delia. Uh, I have two beautiful daughters, uh, Candace and, uh, and Tammy. And we have been married now for, for 20 years. Uh, before I start, I just want to thank Dave and his leadership just for giving me this opportunity to introduce myself and also to share a word of encouragement with you today. Before I start my life story, uh, I'd like to greet all my brothers and my sisters in the Lord in that wonderful and precious name of Jesus. I hope you're all well, uh, being under house arrest, so to speak. Okay, so let's begin. Um, I was born and bred in Port Elizabeth. Uh, I've been in Port Elizabeth all my life. Uh, I can remember as a child, I was brought up uh, as a Catholic. Now, this is way before my teen years. Uh, I remember because I used to dip my finger in the holy water. I used to make the cross. And, uh, I remember having my first communion. Uh, I remember I had to bow down and show the cross before I even entered my seat. Uh, I can even remember as a as a child before even my pre primary pre primary years I was I attended uh, Saint Augustine's uh, Saint Augustine's school I uh, by the Catholics by the Catholic school and um, after a while my dad uh, moved to uh, to Morningside uh, in Port Elizabeth and my brother and I attended uh, the Chinese school there. Uh, in that period, my father then gave his life to the Lord, and uh, he became a Christian. So everything changed I mean, from from Catholic to, to Christian. Everything changed, uh, uh, and then my father became a pastor, and uh, he started uh, a small church. And so I became a young Pentecostal Christian. Uh, now the Pentecostal churches in those days were, were come from houses, and we were known as in Afrikaans we were called. Uh, the hand clappers, hand clappers. <laughs> and my dad pastored for many years. Um, but I remember in, in, in the church that my father was pastoring, I had my first encounter with the Holy Spirit. Uh, I was struck by the anointing that I ended up on my back. I, I cried for like a half an hour. I've never cried like that before in my life. And uh, and I had my encounter when I was 12 years old. And to this day, I still don't forget that experience. Uh, being at that young age, I started studying God's word. Uh, I learned to, to play the guitar on my own because I loved singing. Uh, and at that age, my dad even gave me opportunities to, to minister a short word in the, in the church. Uh, I was a Sunday school leader. And in my school days at that time, I was known as the preacher in school because I just wanted to give the word. But uh, I was also a rebellious teenager. Uh, I wanted to have things my way. I had to do things my way. Uh, I finished my matric, which is now grade 12 in 1989, at the age of uh, 20. Uh, I left home the following year, so I was like 21 when I went into the world. Um, and then I started my doing it my way lifestyle. And believe me, I made many mistakes along the way. Uh, I left my dad and his ministry, and I started enjoying life and all the world had to offer, kind of being the rebellious son, you remember the parable. Um, but then at the age of 30, something changed my life completely. And it was there that I met my wife, Delia, in my workplace. I had an awesome job. Um, I had a company vehicle, I had a good salary, I had an incentive, uh, petrol card. I mean, these days you don't get company cars, but I had a company car, I had to keep it full with petrol and things like that. Uh, I didn't pay a cent on that vehicle. Uh, well, Delia and I started going out for a year before we decided to settle down and, and get married. Uh, we both came from broken relationships, and um, we agreed that if we are to marry, we would have to commit ourselves to God completely. And so we did, because both of us come from a, a Christian upbringing. Uh, 
Uh, and I, I guess these things are, are, are part of our journey and we would like our children also to have that encounter with the Holy Spirit because once they have that encounter, things will change. So uh, we joined a small church uh, in the place where we were staying and I got to studying God's Word again. I'm, I'm really studying away. This prophesied over me that I'll be doing a lot of writing and believe me, I, I started writing a lot, studying His Word. And I started preaching at uh, some local churches. We, we are staying now basically in Boys and Spark. We've been here for like 15 years. And uh, I've had many opportunities to preach into some local churches. And God gave us two beautiful daughters. I say beautiful because they look like their mother. <laughs> uh, Candace, unfortunately, is already married. And we have our first granddaughter, beautiful child. Tammy is uh, still staying with us. She is uh, in a relationship with someone already. Um, you know, and we've been through tough times as Christians. And even now, under the lockdown, we still go through our trials and, uh, and our tribulations. But I want to remind you about a scripture in John 16, uh, verses 33. And it says, uh, I've told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble. But take heart because I've overcome the world. Uh, that's one of my favorite scriptures because at, at, uh, some of us are going through tougher times than others. And at the moment, there is hope in our faith, in our God. And, and that's why I read the scripture because Jesus said to us that we are going through trials and we will go through tribulations. And, you know, I remember when the lockdown first started. Uh, my daughter Tammy came to me and she says, Dad, what are we going to do now that we can't even serve God together? Uh, we can't even go to church and serve the Lord together. And how do we visit our friends and, and, and our families while we're basically under house arrest? And I answered her with a simple question because I always pray for wisdom from the Lord, especially when it comes to our children, we have to answer them a certain way. And I answered her with a question. I said to her, that's not the, the right question to ask, my baby. The right question to ask is, what are we going to do with the time that we have while we are at home? Because if you really think about it, Christianity started in home. Charity begins at home. Everything begins at home. How you are at home shows how you are in church. And how you are in church supposed to show how you are at home. And at this time... Many of us are worried and uh, the world is concerned with the things of life, you know. Uh, how do we pay our debts? Uh, uh, do we have enough finances for food? Uh, people are making loans and, and asking family members for loans. I have many people asking me for loans and, and I say to them, listen, I can't give you anything because whatever I have is, is for my family. We've got to prepare for, the, for, for, uh, for days to come, you know. And there's also the other part of loneliness. Uh, I mean, we can't even visit our families and, and our friends and even the, amongst the cell groups that we, that we have. But, I, if I, but I'd like to share another scripture, if I may. And this scripture is in First Timothy 6, verse 7. Uh, For we brought nothing into this world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we had food and clothing, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. <clears throat> But then the question comes to me, says, can we really be content with only that? Uh, I mean, there are some people in this world who have an abundance of everything. They have everything. They've done everything. Yet they are still not contented. There is still something missing in their life. And, and, our, and, and our whole life, we strive. Even as Christians, we, 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 we want to have it all and more. But there is still something missing. And even now under, under lockdown, we are in a worse state of worry than we were before uh, because now we're not having enough to be contented with. And, and the reason why is because there's still something missing as Christians. Um, it is at this time I want to share another scripture with you. Uh, it's in Matthew 6 verse 31 where Jesus says, Do not worry saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? Uh, for the pagans run after all these things, uh, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. 
but this is the, the, my, uh, my favorite part. But first seek, seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. So Dilly and I decided we, since the beginning of lockdown, we started praying every evening. And uh, we joined other prayer groups and on social media and we started praying with them. Um, you know, spending so much time with the Lord every evening, you, you, we, we started running out of things to, to, to ask the Lord. Uh, so we asked people uh, for things that we can add to our prayer list. You know, we had a special prayer list and, and we were praying for other people as well. Uh, as well. But there was still something missing. Uh, our prayers every evening became more uh, a burden to us as everything became repetitive because there was just something missing man. And, and then we realized that our breakthroughs did not come. The, our trials and tribulations were getting more harder. Uh, our prayers were like, we were like hitting solid walls. And then I went back to that scripture, Matthew 6 verse 33. And God says again, Jesus says, First seek his kingdom and his righteousness. And all these things that you are worried about will be given to you as well. And I saw the mistake that we were making. That something was missing. We did not put God first. And straight away, uh, when I told Dili about the scripture, we, we had to repent. That evening of prayer, we repented. Uh, we started focusing, focusing all our energy and our prayers on, on God, on Him. And we started thanking Him, and we started just worshiping Him in song. And, and we waited on Him to speak to us and give us strength. You know, we, we spend that quiet time the Lord, and something happened. Our prayer time became something to look forward to. Man, our finances uh, stretched, and we could survive on it on a weekly basis. Uh, Delia, uh, my wife, who was, who was at work at the moment, recently accepted a temporary contract position just before the lockdown. And you might understand this, she accepted a temporary contract position. It wasn't even a permanent position, but she was asked to return to work, still being on contract. Um, and then she was told to stay at home if there was no work without pay, which, you, as you know, if you're at home at the moment, some of us are at home and we're not getting paid. But <laughs> mind you, the, the work started streaming in that she couldn't take off. And the last two weeks, she's been constantly at work. Uh, our investments, even under the bad economy, started to increase to, to, the, to the highest rate. Uh, uh, so our prayers have changed. Our prayers have now become prayers of thankfulness and prayers of gratefulness for what God is doing. I realized something, that nothing is missing anymore because we have given everything over to Him. Uh, and I want to end off with one of my favorite scriptures in James 1 verses 2. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. And so you see, my friends, having faith and trusting only in God and not on our own strength produces that perseverance, which leads to pure joy as we see God being that something missing in our lives. Uh, I pray that after this word that you will learn to spend more quality time with God uh, as he wants to spend more quality time, valuable time with you. So let us just uh, pray. Just quickly. Father, forgive us, Lord, for not spending enough quality time with you. Help us right now through your spirit to trust and have more faith in you, especially in this time that we can persevere under any trial that comes our way and that we can learn to grow and mature with you. Thank you for your word. And also the social media platform that can be used to reach and teach us about your word. And everyone say in agreement, Amen. Uh, and after prayer, as I always say, be blessed so that you can be a blessing to others. Amen.